Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 1974 film Puzzle, and it is giallo-ish. I wouldn't straight up call it giallo, although it is an Italian film, and it has a lot of giallo elements to it. It's not straight up giallo feeling, and uh, part of me was thinking in the beginning, I'm like, ah, this should be giallo because produced by Luciano Martino, who produced a lot of giallo films. Um, this one was directed by Duccio Tassari, now, if you think, hmm, well, if you've been watching plenty of Giallo, if you think, hmm, I'm kind of familiar with that name, it's because uh, Duccio Tassari also did Death Occurred Last Night, which I will be reviewing relatively soon, as well as Winged Devils and The Bloodstained Butterfly, which I already have a review for The Bloodstained Butterfly up on my channel, so you can check that out. That's a part of the Giallo and Giallo-esque uh, playlist that I have on my channel, which this will also be going in there because I'm like, it's Giallo-ish. So that'll go on that playlist as well. This is written by Tassari as well as Bruno Di Geronimo, which when I read that name, I was like, that also sounds familiar. That's because Bruno Di Geronimo had also written scripts for What Have You Done to Solange, which I also have a review for on my channel, The Weapon, The Hour, and The Motive, A Quiet Place to Kill, which I also have a review for on my channel, and The Man to Kill. And also involved in writing the script was Roberto Infacelli, who wrote scripts for The Stranger Returns, Without Warning, The Great Kidnapping, and Last Stop on the Night Train, just to name a few. So, with older films, when a character goes to a psychiatrist or a psychologist, usually their sanity ends up being questioned in the end of the film, or if it's from their perspective, it's more of a kind of like, are they a reliable narrator type thing? And this has been done in some other uh, Giallo films before, like... I think it's it's done probably the best example for me personally. It was done that way for uh, Lucio Fulci's A Woman in a, uh, a Lizard in a Woman's Skin, which I also have a review for on my channel. Uh, but yeah, a, a lot of film from back then, it would be like if they show someone going to a psychiatrist or a psychologist, that person's sanity is in question for the entire film. So they really want the audience at that point to kind of oscillate between can we trust this person, can we not trust this person, are they good, are they evil? And I think that's what they're planting in the very beginning with, he's calling himself Peter in the beginning, but as we know him, Edward, but he goes by Ted. So like literally this character has three names in the film, which is kind of rough to like get down initially because I was like, how should I be referring to this guy when I'm taking my notes? So I settled on Ted. I will be calling him Ted because that's what he's called for the majority of the film. And that's what he's called by the people who knew him most before his car accident that gave him amnesia. And then he's got all these memories, obviously, to think back on. But we'll talk more about that as we go. Wow. Uh, what an introduction for Philip, the character of Philip, or the guy who calls himself Philip. When he cold cocks Ted, he sees him after he was just with a psychiatrist, and he's just like, hey, how's it going? Wham. And then they start talking. He's like, what did I do? I don't even remember who I am. And he's like, oh, yeah, you don't remember? How convenient. And then we find out as the film goes on that obviously Ted had been involved in this drug smuggling situation with how much they say it was like a million dollars worth of heroin. I was like, that's nuts. What did they say? Like a thousand pounds of it or something like that. Maybe it was just a hundred pounds. I don't remember. Whatever it was, they were like, it's a million dollars worth. I remember that much. Imagine Ted's situation of losing your memory and then basically coming to in the middle of what seems like a spy thriller. And this does kind of seem more like a spy thriller with some Giallo-esque elements added into it. But think about it from Ted's perspective. You know, he he's going to the psychiatrist because he's like, I don't even fully remember who I am. I don't know my past at this point. This guy shows up, cold cocks him, tells him that he knows him from his past and is acting in a suspicious way where he would think that this guy has some sort of grudge with him. And then that person gets shot through the window when he's standing in front of Ted. Like, Put yourself in that situation. You're just, like, confused. I mean, you were confused before, but even more confused and probably very scared. So, I mean, it's a pretty nuts setup in that sense. Yup, Murphy beds are a perfect hiding place for bodies. Ted knows that. But here's the thing. If Ted doesn't have some sort of inkling that he is on the wrong side of the law, why would he hide Philip's body after he gets killed? 
he would go to the police and be like, yo, I was in this place. A guy just got shot. Uh, can you investigate this? No. Instead, he hides the body and he gets out of town and goes back to his hometown. Well, I don't know if that's where he comes from, but that's where he was living with Sarah at some point. When their relationship was good. The camera work going from the gunshot to the showing of the swim meet. Super cool. And there is some really good directing in this and cinematography, so I like the look of this film quite a bit. What I'm talking about specifically in this moment is at the swim meet when we're first introduced to Luca and Sarah and George, for that matter. Um, no, not George. Reinhardt. Reinhardt is who it is. Yeah, Sarah, Luca, and Reinhardt at the swim meet. Um, they start with the with the close-up of the gun. So it gives you this idea that it's like something crime-related, someone's going to get shot, and then it fires, and then it's like this askew shot that like pans back and shows the, the swim meet start, and people dive into the water and start going. So it's this uh, misrepresentation of what's going on. Like you think it's going to be like this highly charged, violent situation, but actually it's a swim competition. And you're just like, oh... You got me on that one. So I like that shot. Luca has a lot of attitude. Yeah, a lot of attitude for a little kid. Obviously very protective of Sarah as well. I assume it's one of those things where he definitely has a crush on her, especially backed up by his photo album that comes into play much later in the film, where he has an insane amount of photos of her, and most importantly, a photo of Reinhardt and Mary, so she knows at that point that there's something off about Reinhardt then because she knew from the get-go there was something wrong with Mary when she whacks her with her car. But we'll talk about that more in a bit. I noted immediately when uh, Sarah was messing around with the chainsaw at her place, Chekhov's chainsaw. You know that whole thing about Chekhov's gun where in a film, if you see the gun, it's going to be used much later on? They put so much focus on that chainsaw that I was like, Chekhov's chainsaw... We're seeing this chainsaw, it's going to be used later. And obviously it does, in pretty awesome fashion in my opinion. You know, uh, Sarah fighting for her life against Reinhardt, sawing through chairs and whatnot, and then eventually Reinhardt falling on it, which I'll give my full opinion on that later at the end. Obviously, Whiskey, the dog, not the drink, acting up is an indicator that Sarah's in danger the first time that something actually ends up happening to her. That's when someone busts into her place and, I guess, like, chloroforms her, basically, knocks her out, doesn't do anything to her, doesn't steal anything, but just, like, messes the house up a little bit. So you get the idea that this is kind of like a mind game situation, just to make her feel like she's in danger, to make her somewhat afraid. Uh, and that is what's going on. And we figure out that most... I don't know if that was Reinhardt in the end or if that was uh, George who had done that one. But George shows up not too long after that and kind of explains things about her ex. I, I think it was her ex, Ted. Um, I don't know if it was a situation where they were st still technically in a relationship, but were kind of like not together at that point, or they were totally broken up. I don't know. But anyway. Bad luck for Reinhardt that Sarah's husband comes back. Although not, I mean, I wrote that down at the time when I didn't necessarily know that what Reinhardt's involvement was going to be in everything. So at that point I was like, oh, it seems like Reinhardt's legitimately interested in Sarah, which he could still have been, but by the end of the film you, you get the idea that most likely what's going on there is he's more interested in getting to Ted because he knows about the drugs, because he knows about the value of the drugs, and he's looking to get the drugs and use Ted for his connection in, I think he said New York, to make this sale and turn those drugs into money. Getting am amnesia from a car crash is one way to get a fresh start for your failed relationship. I like that aspect where they, they kind of talk about it, uh, Ted and Sarah, and they're basically saying, well, I mean, Ted basically says, like, I'm kind of a new person. I don't remember anything. Sorry if there were problems. Let's start this relationship anew. And I was like, well, I mean, that's, that's one definite way to get a fresh start. I mean, for both of them, honestly, because if Ted's not remembering who he was, whatever problems there were with Ted may not really be there anymore. Not as far as, like, things he did in his past, but as far as, like, his personality and any sort of, like, aggressive tendencies he may have had. Or argumentative, for that matter. Brutal scene when Sarah finds Whiskey dead on her bed. Yeah, that is one that people who 
hate seeing animals harmed in film. Uh, people will freak out with that one because it looks really bad. Uh, it looks really gruesome. I mean, that's the most like violent and gruesome looking scene in the entire film. It was, it's, it's something. I'll say that. When George tells Sarah about how Ted owes a million dollars, the way he was phrasing things made me think back to the clock that Sarah told Ted was meant to secure their future. Also, you have to note that it pops up in Ted's random memories uh, that he has from before the accident so many times. Which, by the way, those random memories were shot really well. They looked really cool. Like, the use of light and dark and shadows in that, super awesome. And in almost every single one of those memories, those little split sec, you know, few second memories, there's a representation of that clock in there. And they had also had some very strong language when Ted and Sarah were talking about the clock, about how it's something to like symbolize their future and how they'll never need money or, you know, they'll, they'll be like financially secure, basically. And that was just like, the drugs are in the clock, obviously. And guess what? They were in the clock. As soon as it's nighttime and it's raining, you know something is about to go down. Yes, that's what happens in this film. And in Giallo films especially, when it's dark and it's raining, something's going down. And certainly that does happen. That's That time period for film, that was done a lot. Very, very, you know, common. Uh, I love the scene where George turns around in the bathroom. Uh, he was standing at the urinal like he was taking a piss. Um, he turns around to see Ted there, and he's, like, holding his gun like it's his penis. I thought that was particularly funny. Like, he could have just been standing in the bathroom, waiting for him. Like, in a corner, or be in a stall, or just be standing there for as soon as he gets in. Because he has a gun. He's not going to, you know, exit necessarily immediately, because he could shoot him. So, <laughs> the fact that they went that extra step to have him, like, faking that he's pissing, and the gun is his penis... It's just funny, especially the fact that, like, he doesn't turn around and, like, pull it up. He, like, leaves it down as he turns around, like, keeping it there to represent his penis. It's just, it's pretty funny. Gotta love the scene. Oh, I literally was just doing that one. <laughs> Sorry. Mary hitting Sarah with her car definitely seemed intentional. The way it was shot, it looked very intentional, especially because she's not just, like, backing up, like trying to figure out how to get out of there. Like, she guns it really quick, and she seems very precise with, with where she's going. And that made me think that uh, Mary had something to do with what's going on with the whole heroin situation. And in the end, we find out, yes, that is exactly what's going on. Although I can't really fully figure out what Mary's role was. Like, her hitting Sarah with the car, was she trying to kill her to get her out of the way? so that uh, Reinhardt was, like, totally clear to get to Ted and be like, okay, this is what we're going to do with these drugs. I don't know, but, um, I mean, it became very apparent immediately with that scene that she was very, very much suspicious. Although, I do think they did a good job of not necessarily casting suspicion on Reinhardt right at that moment. So it was fine that it seemed really suspicious, honestly, because I, I think that actually then adds to the oh my gosh moment later when you see the picture of Reinhardt and Mary together in Lucas' photo album, which is backwards for some reason. That kid, he's got he's got an attitude. He's running around with an older woman randomly. I don't understand. He's living with his Nana, and then he's just like taking a lot of photos of her, like very much obsessively. He takes the drugs, like she gives him the drugs. Like this kid is not leading a normal life. He, like, he's going to be messed up. He's going to be messed up after all this. George continually throwing lit matches on Sarah when she was laid up with her, I don't even know, scratched leg is what it seemed like in the end. Like, him just, like, lighting matches and throwing them on her lap. Funny. I gotta say, it was funny to me. Like, I know for some people it's, like, effectively scary. And for Sarah the character it obviously was but i found it really funny because he just keeps doing it and it looks like he's having so much fun he's just like <laughs> uh love that scene there there are a few of those types of scenes that you know that in the urinal and all the chainsaw stuff quite like it bingo lucas picture of reinhardt with mary proves what i suspected yes that mary was on the wrong side of things i also started to suspect Reinhardt at some point because he just kept hanging around and hanging around and hanging around especially the fact that he keeps hanging around after Ted gets back 
and he's very much aware that Ted and Sarah are together, and they're kind of, like, rekindling things, but he doesn't seem upset, really, and he's just like, oh, I'm still gonna be around, like, you're just like, mm, that's a little suspicious there. The fist fight between Ted and George, fun and funny, the one that takes place on those stairs outside, um, not bad choreography, honestly, but, like, also the way it looked just kind of funny, the way they were fighting, so I enjoyed that quite a bit. The only other, like, random fight scene like that I think I really, really liked was the film I did a review for, um, Corpse Mania. Check that out. That's also in my Giallo and Giallo-esque review, um, playlist. Gotta love the shot of George's body flying over the cliff. Uh, true ragdoll physics at play there. You can see it, like, all the just, like, random, like, unconscious flailing that, I mean, obviously it was a dummy. <laughs> just super funny, like, and the fact that Ted was so easily able to just, like, flip him off the cliff, also pretty funny. So I love that. I, I love those types of shots from these Giallo films, and there are a bunch. Like, I think they did it in uh, Black Belly the Tarantula was another one where you see someone falling off a building. There was another one kind of recently like that as well can't remember i've watched so many at this point but yeah like those are always funny to me because you can tell it's a it's a it's a um i was gonna say ragdoll a, a dummy and like the body parts just flail all over the place it's hilarious and why is sarah getting rid of her cast that's what i didn't understand like i think it's because she thought that ted might be in trouble because she realized that reinhardt's on the wrong side of the law he's not who she thought he was so wouldn't her instinct be call the police or you have crutches you can also get somewhere with your cast on so then she spends all this time with lucas help to like cut this cast off and then it's just revealed that like all she has is like a scratch i don't understand so like if you're in a cast like that it's usually because your leg is broken not because you just have like a, a scratch that's like this big like <laughs> I don't understand. It really made no sense. And then once things get going, like, she has no problems walking on it whatsoever. So, like, I just thought that whole thing was just weird. But films like this, man, they have a lot of cork, cork to them, and this one does. Um, were ceiling fans really that sharp back then? That That's a legitimate question, and people can let me know in the comments. Because when Ted is able to get himself untied, because Reinhardt had tied him up... Uh, by not, you know, getting that fan untied and having it fall to the ground and he just, like, rubs the ropes up against the fan. Like, it is, like, razor sharp. Were fans that sharp back then? And if yes, man, that's dangerous. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me because I know that over time, like, things have become way more safe. But, yeah, just, just you know, curious. Nice shot of the razor moving towards Sarah. I did like that when Reinhardt finally, like, pulls out the straight razor. And they focus on the straight razor with her, like, not in focus behind. And he starts, like, moving towards her. And then, like, they get her face in focus as the razor's moving towards her. Another one of those nice moments of, of really nice camera work and really nice directing in this film. So, like I said, I mean, it looks good. Sure did take some time to get that chainsaw going. That's another thing. Uh, as she's kind of locked herself in the kitchen and she's just pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling on this chainsaw it's very much like in all these films where people are trying to start the car try to start the car try to start the car you know same thing with the chainsaw it's you know do you re can you really have that much trouble with a chainsaw especially one that once you get it going it runs no problem and even stays idling so someone can fall on it and die reinhardt in this case I do and do not like the slow motion portions with Reinhardt in the end. Because I feel like it's kind of like unnecessarily slowing things down on one hand. But on the other hand, it actually like captures some really kind of cool looking shots from time to time. Like the one where she's like the squirt bottle of alcohol where she's squirting it in his eyes. Like I thought that looked pretty cool. So like some of the moments... I liked, but other moments I was like, why are we doing this in slow motion? And why are we doing so much slow motion at this point? So, I don't know. I was kind of in between on that. And I definitely, definitely like the end of Reinhardt falling on that chainsaw. Although, 
Although, it would have been a lot better if you see a lot more. Like, see it kind of tearing into him a little bit more. You know, a la something like the film Pieces, which I did a review for recently. Check it out. Um, and, you know, or just at least see, like, blood flying out. You don't even necessarily need to show anything being cut. But just, like, throw a lot of blood in there. That's easy to do. Would have liked that. Um, really cool shooting locations in this film, by the way. That's one of the things I like about a, like, a lot of Giallo and Giallo-esque type films. They have a tendency to, like, really take advantage of beautiful places. Um, both, like, outdoor beautiful places, like, you know, beaches and villas and stuff like that. But also, like, indoor, you know, interesting decorations and architecture and stuff like that. And this one has some of that good stuff. Like I said, Ted's memory scenes, pretty well shot. I really like those kind of like artistic and the use of light and dark and shadows. Really enjoyed that. And the final thing I want to say about this, that drink cabinet that Sarah had, I want that drink cabinet. Now, if you didn't notice, go back and check out the film. It's on Giallo Realm, by the way. Uh, I'm reviewing almost everything that's... I'm trying to review everything on the Giallo Realm YouTube channel that is subtitled or in English. There are a few that come up and they're only in in Italian and I can't I you know, I don't know Italian. I can't watch that. So, but anyway, go watch it and watch for when they're in Sarah's house. She has this drink cabinet that has on top of it a diver a, a diver's helmet and it lights up. It's also a light. That is super cool. I would love to have that drink cabinet. Just saying. Very cool. I'm always on the lookout for those types of things in these types of films. Like, different decades had, like, different aesthetics and different cool things that just did not survive. And those types of drink cabinets are one of the really cool things from the 70s. Anyway, the, those are my thoughts on Puzzle. Uh, out of five stars with half stars in play, it wasn't great. I mean, I'm really kind of in the middle on it. Like, it was really slow is one of the big things. Um... Yeah, just unnecessarily slow for a lot of it. Uh, it felt like it was kind of just running in place at times. So I'm going to give it two and a half stars out of five. Um, yeah, but I would love to hear your opinion on this film if you've seen it. Go ahead and put it in the comments. Or if you just want to talk about Giallo in general or horror in general, we can do that as well. Do me a quick favor, though. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, awesome. Thank you. If you haven't, it is quick. It is painless. It costs you no money. And it legitimately motivates me. Uh, when I'm doing this video, I'm not making any sort of money doing this through YouTube. So I'm just doing this for creative outlet purposes and also to build a nerdy horror community. So please join that community and we can talk, get nerdy about horror, which is what I'm all about. So yeah. Um, also hit the notification bell button if you also hit the subscribe button because then you'll know when I'm putting up new videos, which I'm doing about four a week, which is I think a decent amount. But regardless, thank you very much for taking your time to check this video out. And until next time, keep it brutal.